Hi guys, it's Erin again, and I hope you are enjoying the stretching videos. Um, I've got a lot of great questions um, from posting them, so I wanted just to address a few things. Um, the first of which is people are asking about fascial stretching, and a lot of people are used to stretching for 10, 15, 20, maybe 30 seconds, but they keep asking, I, I'm, I'm explaining that you might hold a fascial stretch from two to seven minutes and what the difference is. So I wanted to take a second to talk to about what fascia is and how we stretch fascia differently than maybe just a specific muscle. So we kind of have to have a background about what fascia is. So fascia is this three-dimensional connective tissue web that goes everywhere in our body, from our head to our feet, our front to our back continuously without beginning or end. So this stuff surrounds, supports, and protects every structure in our body. It certainly covers, you know, the huge muscle groups, which is, I think, what a lot of people are taught about fascia. Sometimes people will say it's the shiny stuff on top of the chicken breast or, or the tough tissue on the outside of a roast. Most people have seen that. But really, fascia in a live being is much different than it is on a dead being, which isn't surprising. Fascia is filled with fluid and it actually helps connect a lot of different things in our body without getting too technical, and, and I can go into it a little bit more. There's a lot of information um, on the myofascialrelease.com website, certainly on our website from work, which is handson-austin.com, about what fascia is. There's also an interesting series of videos by a French hand surgeon um, the first of which is strolling under the skin. There's another one, muscle attitudes. I think there's one more out that I haven't seen, but um, it's really interesting. They This doctor actually took live views of what fascia looks like in a person, which is one of the first uh, visuals that we get. And we see that it has this kind of fractal nature. Um, uh, it talks about the, the theory of tensegrity a lot in those videos too, which you can look up, but, but Within our body, we're kind of gliding through this fascial system. Our organs, our muscles, our blood vessels, our nerves, everything lies within this fascial system. And when the fascia is restricted, um, it can actually put 2,000 pounds of pressure per square inch on tissues. So when we have critical pain-causing structures, and, and really just every structure in our body, encompassed by this fascia, when we have restrictions in the fascia, it can really wreak a lot of havoc. So the interesting thing about fascia versus specific muscles, and one of the things that um, took me a little bit to learn, but then resonated very deeply with me, is the concept that, that because fascia is three-dimensional and it doesn't have a beginning or end, some of the traditional stretches that we have aren't as effective. So you know, I th my first video was about neck stretching, and, and I learned to stretch the trapezius, you know, or, or the neck. You, you bring your ear towards your shoulder. Well, it's okay, and you're lengthening the tissue, but you're really ignoring the huge matrix of fascia, which is actually the, the stuff that's restricted in most people. So fascial stretching is not so much stretching, uh, you know, a muscle or, an, or a joint, to opposite sides, you know, your origin and insertion of a muscle and, and then you stretch them apart. That's how we learn traditional stretching. But really, it's about connecting to the three-dimensional tightness that lies within our body. So instead of just ear to shoulder, I might kind of just play with it a little bit. It's like, oh, if I rotate just this much, I can get a different strain pattern. And then as that releases, it opens up another area to stretch. I sometimes liken it to pulling weeds in your garden, how your weeds wrap around and go through your, your plants, and if you were to pull it really hard, that whole root bed would still be there. So sometimes you have to soften and, and give time and, and put a little time under tension um, um, through the, the root system for them to release. So with every stretch that I, I'm going to talk about in this series, there is a bit of a traditional... Uh, background to the stretch. You know, the piriformis stretch was yesterday and we talked about how we open that stretch. But really my challenge and, and my goal kind of throughout the series is to teach you how to not just 
feel that muscle, but then allow your body to feel around it or beyond that area. Feel how those areas are connected to other areas of tension in your body and giving that time to release and relax. So instead of a, a fascial stretching, it's more like a matrix reorganization. So I really recommend uh, those videos. Again, strolling under the skin and muscle attitudes. You can find snippets on YouTube. Um, they're not all inclusive, but it's a good place to start. Um, so you can kind of see that and, and get a, a feeling of what this fascial system really looks like and, and how it connects and, and, and really communicates uh, throughout our body. So hope that helps and have fun.